All right, we have ourselves another social distancing nickel bag hunt. We'll let you know what we find. We're obviously looking for those older ones, buffaloes and silvers. But we're also looking for those late 30s, early 40s, and into the early 50s coins as well. And looking for any oddities that we might find and any foreign coins. So we'll roll in what we find as we find them. Right out of the chute, we're pulling some oldies out of this bag, so hopefully that pans out. We've got a 57 here, We've got ourselves a 52, a 53, and we even got ourselves a 40 already. Just a standard old 40 there, but it is an old coin. Um, so, hey, just got into the bag. Maybe that's a good sign of things to come. Let's find out. All right, checking in probably less than a quarter of the way through the bag still pulling lots of oldies we've got some some in the 40s there were rolled out we're going to check for anything special on those in a little bit here got some 50s got some really bad looking nickels in this batch um they're newer ones well that one over there's a 60 but some bad looking nickels so i'm hoping and you can see there's some more laying here on the edge but i'm hoping that's going to lead to some more old ones and it did lead to one fairly old one, and uh, not a buffalo and not a silver, but that is a 1939. And we're going to flip that over here. That year they did have the double Monticello, so we want to see if this one has that, and it does not. And there is no mint mark either. So we're just in the regular 1939s, checking in our book here. I utilize the uh, United States coins. Um, the the Bresset book, I think, is what it's called, the Kenneth Bresset, um, the Red Book, I usually call it. Um, however, you can see this is a 2017 version. I'm a few years out of date, so maybe my values and and some of the information is a little outdated. I'll have to pick up a new book here pretty soon. But the 39, the regular one, there was a bunch of them, 125 million of those produced. Too bad it wasn't a D. We'd be down in the uh, the three million mark. Would be worth a lot more. Um, obviously, the double Monticello is worth a lot more than that, and the S's are even a little bit valuable there. But uh, the bag is going good. We've got some old coins out, and that 1939 on the board. So we're going to keep looking. All right, just got done with that last update and went to pull some coins out of the bag. I see something in here that's sliding. I don't know if you can see it sitting back there. If it's just dirty or if that... Oh, I think I see a mark on that one. We might have ourselves a silver out of there. Um, I'm going to put this underneath the scope, actually. Move that 39 out of the way. And let's uh, put this guy down here and see what we have got. And the date on that is a 1945. Let's see what we got on the back side. And it's a P, a 1945 P. So we're on the board with a silver. All those old coins were definitely a sign of what we were going to find. And we've got a silver. And like I said, we're probably not even a quarter of the way through the bag here. So we're going to keep looking. Uh, hopefully that's a good sign of things to come. Stay tuned. All right, we are at the halfway point. Have a few more 40s and 50s nickels there. Amazingly, no foreign nickels yet. Usually you find a Canadian mixed in somewhere. Now we have ourselves a 1938 no mint mark on the board. And as you probably know, or if you didn't know, 1938 is the transition year so some of the nickels were buffaloes and some of the nickels were jeffersons obviously we have the jefferson here we'd much rather have the buffalo version be worth a lot more than just the jefferson but nevertheless it is a really cool find and we're going to keep looking all right just a little bit past the halfway point there 
and we pulled ourselves another 1939 focus there we go 1939 we have a really <laughs> odd and for some reason somebody decided to put a hole in it 1952 at the reason that I turned the camera on is this one right here yeah, I think you see the date on that one we're gonna put it under the scope and look up on the screen here to see what we got let me switch the screen over and we'll get up there on the screen let's pull that baby down you betcha that's a 1945 and let's flip it over D I'll look at something here real quick thought maybe there's a little bit of rotation I might have to look at that a little closer there might be a little rotation on that one too but that is definitely another silver on the board so that's two out of this one bag thank goodness um, bags are kind of drying up right now unfortunately uh, due to the whole COVID-19 thing uh, the banks aren't seeing the change come in so the source that we were getting these bags from hasn't had any for weeks and you'd probably say, well, is it safe to even be going through change at this point in time? Well, luckily, I have a pretty good back stock of change. I am going through it rather quickly, though, um, during these social distancing times. And so uh, starting to run a little bit lower on the change. But the change that I have has been sitting for weeks and weeks and weeks. So way past what the, the COVID virus would be able to withstand. So the stuff that I'm going through is basically would be virus free plus as you can see I'm wearing gloves but that's mainly to stay clean so uh, but there is a second silver on the board and we're gonna keep searching alright wrapping up that bag and it was a pretty awesome bag actually uh, quite a few in the 50s there some in the 40s we started off heavy with some older coins and then three 1939s kinda of surprising to find that many one 1938 that's really good real close you know that's buffalo year there we had the one that had the hole in it that we showed and then like i, I said part way through we were having no foreign coins in there which was kind of surprising usually you find something and right at the end of the bag we had a, a big run on canadians there were a lot of them in there somebody must have dumped them all in the machine at the same time or whatever and the oldest one of the canadians was the 1963 Kind of neat to see a Canadian that old floating around in there, but we ended up with seven Canadians for the Canadian Fishing Fund. And then the finds of the day, two silver war nickels, a 1945P and a 1945D. So there you go, really awesome nickel bag hunt there. This is Dan with 3D Outdoors reminding you to get into the outdoors and enjoy everything it has to offer. If you like this video, make sure to hit the subscribe button at the bottom. See you next time.